Welcome to this session friends, my name is Yogesh. In this session we are going to discuss on the steps required to create EC2 instance using uh, AWS Management Console or you can say a graphical user interface. Here I am already logged into my uh, AWS Management Console and uh, I am going to select EC2 service here because I am going to create a EC2 instance. The region uh, which I selected that is Oregon, but uh, depending upon your location, whichever is the nearest region, select that because uh, there will be less or lower latency if you choose the nearest region to your location. I'm just taking to Oregon because this is test instance. I'm in Sydney, but I'm going with this one uh, because I already used a couple of services from this region. I prefer this one for uh, this test launch. Okay, if you see there are no running instances, it's zero. Security group, one security group, which is default security group is always created. So that's a default one. Don't worry about this one. To launch instance, just click on launch instance. Okay, if you can uh, see here, there are multiple types of uh, AMIs available. Amazon Linux AMI, which is Amazon customized and Red Hat. 7.2 CC Linux, Ubuntu, Microsoft, and different Microsoft, uh, and uh, again CC Server 11. So, friends, uh, up to you which AMI you want to use. I'm going with fair, free tier. What it means, I will be not getting charged because I will be using uh, in Amazon free tier limits. Okay, friends, uh, one thing what is AMI? Maybe you haven't heard about AMI. So, AMI means Amazon Machine Image let's say baked operating system image so it got uh, vendor applied uh, or installed operating system or, and a couple of uh, basic settings but you can always customize it and you can uh, create new image from that particular OS which you uh, customize as per your SOE so here I'm going to choose uh, Red Hat 7.2 or you can choose anyone because all are free tier these are linux i'm going with red hat i'm selecting this one these are the variant instance types you can uh, choose up to your requirement m2 m4 m3 which we discussed in first video up to you which you want to choose but i'm going with free tier here because uh, i don't want to pay f amazon uh, for uh, bigger instance types this is free tier which is selected by default it's got EBS storage 1B CPU and 1GB RAM I'm clicking on next configure instance detail okay number of instances how many instances you want to launch in this run if you type 4 4 instances will get launched uh, please uh, remember there is limit associated with uh, every account limit is like how many instances you can launch uh, in single go so there are different limits you can uh, check these I will explain these in uh, coming videos this is uh, whether you want uh, sport instance or not I already explained uh, what are the sport instances in previous video uh, I'm not going with this option and this is the default network this is the VPC or you can create your own VPC I'm going to use Amazon's default VPC and uh, here which subnet you want to use the Oregon region go three availability zones so these are different subnets according to availability zone so I'm going with no preference so whatever default I will get that automatically assign public IP it's, it's enabled by default so I'm going with this option I am role I'm setting role role system admin this role we created in uh, I am section of uh, this video not this video the previous videos which we recorded you can refer that if you want to see what is this role how we created and this is next thing is shutdown behavior by default it stop or you can uh, terminate it what it mean when you shut down the operating system whether the server or instance got uh, gets power up or it get terminated terminate mean uh, decommissioned you can uh, uh, take it as an easy easy language this is enable termination protection what it mean if by default you click on terminate this instance whether it should get terminated or it should not get terminated 
so that's very critical instance let's say your production server and uh, you can enable this feature this is not going to cost anything extra that's up to you i'm just selecting this one protect against any accidental termination monitoring uh, default monitoring like or customized monitoring here if i enable this feature i will be getting additional charge i don't want to enable this feature this is my lab server i don't want to enable any monitoring then tenancy tenancy mean uh, you want it on uh, shared hardware or you want as a dedicated or you want uh, on a dedicated host i'm going with shared one because other tenancy types are going to charge me some additional money i'm not going with those ones and then advanced settings and advanced settings if you see here i'm expanding this bit okay this is the user data friends uh, what user data mean uh, when this instance launch uh, if you can uh, put some scripts which you want to be executed when instance boot first time you can add uh, let's say you can add shell scripts here let me show you how we can add those so i'm adding a shell script sample shell script i'm typing interpreter then bash here mkdir slash root slash test dir then i want to do echo this is user data past file i'm diverting it to this particular directory test file so i'm just going to do some random stuff here just creating a directory and passing some parameters or uh, some information in this particular file so when the server get launched it will uh, run this script so that's up to you how you want to do this is as text if you got any shell script you can attach it as file here that's up to you okay so next thing add storage by default it got 10 gb as per my experience red hat 7.2 uh, it's uh, only a couple of gbs let's say uh, 3 to 4 gb sufficient but i'm going with the uh, default which is 10 gb this is gp2 general purpose 2 storage i can choose io1 or magnetic i already explained what are these storage types so i'm going with gp2 here and these are the iops values delete on termination is set to true what it means when this server get terminated or decommissioned automatically this storage will get deleted and this is the default from amazon the operating system storage is not encrypted if you want to encrypt it you have to use third party utility but amazon is not supporting uh, to encrypt uh, operating system volume the other volumes let's say your application volume or your data volume you can encrypt it but not operating system one so that's fine it is a dev sda at amazon layer next thing tag is trans tag mean uh, you can put anything which you can uh, use to easily remember or uh, customize the instance so here i'm putting name as yogesh lab server You can put any tags friend uh, let me add one more tag let me show you here os you can type uh, red hat that's up to you what tags you want to use rhel702 i got these two tags now next configure security group uh, this is the default security group which allows uh, sss to this instance from anywhere on port 22 which is default sss port i'm adding another rule i'm going to configure this server as uh, web server so i'm just allowing port uh, 80 connectivity on port 80 from anywhere or you can uh, choose from my ip my ip mean uh, ip of your machine from where you are launching this instance so you can put custom rule or particular cidr or ip or security group so i'm allowing it from anywhere for this test instance this is done and now clicking on review and launch review like whatever the settings you have done till now it will you can review those so this is t2 micro with this one vcpu 1 gb memory this is the security group and uh, these are the instance details this is a storage 10 gb storage and these are the tags 
so everything looks fine to me I'm just clicking on launch when you click on launch uh, it will uh, give you option to generate or use existing key pair key pair is similar to your RSA keys that's a certificate file which got information uh, or negotiation information with your AWS instance you can uh, connect to AWS instance without password using this particular key pair so I don't have any existing key pair I'm going to create new one and uh, you can name it uh, if you want to use it on multiple servers so let's say I'm taking it as web server Yogesh web server key pair Yogesh web server key pair you can name it uh, as per your requirements you can't view it you have to download this file I'm just clicking on download key pair so download is done I'm just now I'm just closing this page now I'm clicking on launch instance so my instance will get launched here instance are now getting launched this is the instance ID for Amazon they don't know what is the server name or virtual server name or instance name for them instance ID is unique identifier for a virtual server in case you want to raise a case with Amazon to get support on uh, their services they will ask you what is instance ID so just keep a note in next videos I will tell you if you forgot what is the instance ID how you can check by logging into instance like this is the instance ID this is the AMI which we use this is the storage configuration or these are the devices attached to the server everything I will be discussing in coming videos so let's view launch log so everything is successful if you see here launch initiation completed okay so let's jump back to EC2 dashboard again I'm just clicking on the home button EC2 service and uh, this is dashboard friends now it got one running instance earlier it was zero now one running one volume which we attach to the server server is running now initializing in mean uh, it is doing some uh, checks status checks this is the IP public IP which Amazon gave us and this is the DNS public DNS you can use this DNS to connect to server I'm just going to use public IP for uh, this demo session okay so let me open one party session now so I can uh, connect uh, with this one friends uh, I'm on my party session now basically I'm using mobo extra um, uh, for connectivity it go to a couple of extra benefits I if I compare with the normal party because here I can run normal Unix commands I can run SSH FTP everything is supported here so one thing which I did uh, I just copied uh, the pem file in my uh, C drive C drive mean uh, C drive of my Windows machine here it will appear as a uh, Unix drive so I'm just I will just show you pem file if you see this is the pem file I'm in current directory okay now I will connect to this server our EC2 instance which we just launched using its uh, public IP so friends uh, default user for all Linux instances is uh, EC2 user followed by add then IP then minus I like you can uh, minus I mean identity file identity file is this one of a pem file sorry okay so this bit okay if you see uh, we are on our EC2 server now which is in Amazon web services okay so to check uh, first thing we will switch to root user which is powerful user sudo su iPhone we are root now okay so let's check root directory here if you see it called test dir which we created as a shell script and inside this directory we created one file also let me list out that file whether that code created or not if you see test file got created and it got some content like this is user data or something this is user data password file so friends uh, this is the way uh, like you can pass on information or you can uh, put list of packages you want to install these packages you want to do this configuration as a shell script everything will be done that's a way like uh, called bootstrapping basically so you we bootstrapped up the server so that was a simple demo how you can pass data 
so friends uh, this is the installation or you can say a first time creation of EC2 instance if you have any doubt or any query any suggestion just leave a comment on my youtube channel and in next video i will be covering how we can create a similar instance using command line I, if you don't want to use graphical interface thanks for watching this video friends thank you